Hello everyone. As promised in the last video, today we are going to get rid of this auth controller and the rest endpoint slash login which we were using to generate the token. In this, when any request comes to slash API slash auth slash login, then using the username and password present in the request body, user is authenticated. In case credentials are not correct, then we were catching and rethrowing the bad credential exception after logging the error message. And in case authentication is successful, we were using JWT Util class to generate the token. And that generated token is sent as a response body. Now we will completely remove this controller and endpoint. If you remember, we had created one JWT authentication filter. Up till now, this filter was not really getting used. Now we will make sure that all the token generation requests are intercepted and fulfilled by this filter only. In this filter, we have extended username password authentication filter and overridden few methods as well. The first method that we had overridden is attempt authentication. This method will be invoked when a login request is received. In this method, first we are fetching the user login details from the request and then using that details of username and password, we are authenticating the user. The second overridden method is successful authentication. This method will be invoked when user authentication is successful. We have overridden this method because we need to handle the token generation after the authentication is successful. This method will fetch the username or principal from authentication object and pass it to JWT util method using which a token will also be generated. Then we are setting the JWT token in the response header itself. If you remember earlier, we were sending the token as part of response body itself, which is not considered as a good practice and also less secure. Sending JWT token in the response header is better for security and consistency, especially when the client needs to reuse the token for subsequent requests again and again. Now we make sure that all the login requests should be intercepted by our JWT authentication filter. We need to configure a little bit in application security config class. Here we have added this security filter. Now let us create a separate object of this filter first. We can directly use this object in the add filter call. Now we need to make sure that this filter is activated for token generation calls. So to do that, we need to configure the filter process URL configuration. Here we have to provide the endpoint or the URL which will be intercepted by this authentication filter. Earlier it was slash API slash auth slash login. Let us rename it to something more meaningful. Because we will be generating token from this endpoint, so let us name it as get hyphen token. So with this configuration only, any request that comes to slash API slash auth slash get hyphen token will be handled by our JWT authentication filter. Now before we start the application to test our changes, let us make sure that we have put in some breakpoints in the JWT authentication filter so that we can confirm this filter is handling the request for token generation. Now let me start the application in debug mode. Now the application has started. Let us start with the testing. Starting with the loading of initial roles into database using load hyphen roles endpoint. Now let us register one user with simple role underscore user authority. Here we can see the user is also created. Now moving to the next stage, which is to actually test if our changes are working fine for enabling the JWT authentication filter. Now in this, instead of slash login, we will use slash get hyphen token and provide the username and password in the request body. Now we can see with the help of breakpoints that we put in, the request has come to our JWT authentication filter. As we are trying to attempt authentication, so the first method called is attempt authentication. Let us step over and see the user object details. Here you can see user1 and pass1 are retrieved from the request object. Both these details are used to authenticate the user. This will return an instance of authentication. Now as we have provided the correct details, so we are expecting it should return a valid authentication object and the other overridden method will also be called. The other overridden method is successful authentication. 
Let us step over one more time to confirm the same. Here we can see the control has reached the expected method. This method will have the access to authentication object which got created in the attempt authentication flow. Now using that authentication object, we will fetch the user details which is also known as principal. That principal will be passed as an argument to the generate token method of JWT util. This will generate and return the token as string which will be sent as a response header. Let us resume the complete flow and check if we have received the token or not. Here you can see the response does not have any body because we have added the token in header. Let us verify the header as well. We can see the authorization header contains the bearer token. Now using this token, let us try accessing the secured resource as well. Here we can access the secured resource using this token. Let us just verify one negative scenario as well where user is trying to access the endpoint which is not authorized. Here we get access denied exception which is the expected behavior. Now let us just test it with one more user with admin access as well as we have already done in our previous sessions. So with this we have achieved the goal which we have set to remove the authentication controller from the equation and make the JWT authentication filter handle the authentication and token generation flow. Now we can even remove this auth controller altogether as it is not needed now. Now in the end let me just summarize what all we have done in today's session. First we need to get rid of this authentication controller and in place of that we want to use our JWT authentication filter to handle the authentication and token generation flow. To do that we have tweaked the application security config a little bit by configuring the filter process URL of authentication filter object. And that's it. These were the only changes required. I hope you have learned something new today. If the video was helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video we will cover one of the most underrated topic in the software development which is an essential part of your application development but no one really wants to talk about it which is fixing the sonar cube issues so stay tuned and make sure you press the bell icon so that you will get notified when video on sonar cube is released mm -hmm.